Okay, so now we're going to uh, discuss a method for um, actually coming up with some critical regions uh, in the case of composite hypotheses, although it won't necessarily help us that much the last example, but whatever. Um, that was a little bit pathological, though. So um, so these, this method is called uh, the likelihood ratio test, and it's kind of an extension of the idea of the neyman pearson lemma method. So, um, so recall um, that in the... Um, Recall, in the um, Neyman Pearson method, um, the uh, the test um, had the form. Well, we had a critical region um, such that the um, the ratio of kind of uh, likelihoods, if you will, or the ratio of um, how likely it was. Um, to get our value x under hypothesis 0 divided by how likely it was under hypothesis 1 was less than or equal to k in the critical region. So in the critical region where we reject the null hypothesis, the kind of likelihood of the null hypothesis versus the alternative hypothesis is low. And big than or equal to k um, outside the critical region. And so de facto what we have um, is a statistic um, which we could call capital lambda which is this um, ratio um, thought of as a random variable because this little x is really our observation. So this, this ratio then gives a statistic that we're really using to make our test. So this is our statistic, and our test looks like um, our measured value of the statistic is greater than or equal to k in the critical region. And that, and that describes our test. Now, uh, in the case of a um, compositive hypothesis, we want to do a similar thing. Um, in the uh, composite case, um, all we do is, um, you know, we're going to replace um, uh, these uh, numerators and denominators, though, um, by something which um, which is more like the, it takes into account the values that this has. So let me just think of this as a, as a function of the measured value for a moment. Um, that's uh, a function of these parameters where these parameters uh, range between, you know, values um, in, the, in the different hypotheses, more or less. So, um, so in, in particular, um, what we, what we want to do is we want to replace um, we want to replace this um, by, um, by the maximum over the values of the parameter such that the hypothesis is true of, um, of the likelihood uh, given theta, right? So this, um, so we have another way of, of writing this. This is theta such that H naught, this f of x theta, where we're thinking about theta as the thing that's varying. Uh, in that context, we call it the likelihood, and we write the arguments in reverse order. So, um, so what we're going to do is instead of saying, um, you know, what is kind of the likelihood of this value x under this hypothesis? Well, there isn't a, um, you know. We, we don't have, unfortunately, a single value of the parameter um, under the null hypothesis, so we don't have a value of theta. But on the other hand, what we can do is we really can say, well, given that we just measured um, the value x, what's the uh, most likely value of the parameter? And so we say, okay, we pick the most likely value of the parameter, we pick theta such that that's true, and then we plug that in to um, to the value um, to the value for theta in in this in this expression. So it's really like, you know, this is the um, this is some sort of like a maximum likelihood estimator of this um, of this numerator in some sense of this 
uh, of this of this whole guy, um, I guess, uh, of this thing. It's a maximum likely an estimator of this thing, um, given that we're in the context of the null hypothesis. For the alternative hypothesis, which is something a little different, we look at the maximum value over theta such that um, either of the two hypotheses hold um, of the value of f of x um, given that theta, or in other words, this is the maximum of the uh, likelihood function um, theta such that uh, h0 or h2 or h1 is you know kind of in, in any allowable context of the variable. So to say this just a little bit more formally for the moment, what we could say uh, is we're really defining a couple of functions of, uh, of the parameter x. So I'll call it um, lambda top, just temporarily, will be kind of my numerator function. Uh, this is a uh, function of a measured value x, and what is it? It's the um, maximum uh, value of the likelihood function um, for theta such that the null hypothesis is true. And the lambda on the bottom, um, as we've defined over there, is going to be the maximum theta such that either hypothesis is true, the likelihood um, uh, of the likelihood there. Now, so these are really just two uh, functions of this of this you know observed number x. You know, um, given an x, just look at find the parameter theta that maximizes the likelihood, and then I stick in that likelihood. Okay. Um, all right, now then, um, so these, these then give um, random variables, uh, in other words, functions of, um, of capital X, right? So I could call capital um, lambda top really the, um, this function uh, applied to my random variable X, and similarly, um, the bottom random variable um, this function um, defined uh, according to my observation. And then the, um, the corresponding analog for the likelihood um, for the likelihood ratio estimator that we used in uh, Neiman Pearson would be this ratio lambda top over lambda bottom. That's somewhat analogous. Um, so this is called a um, this is called the uh, like, uh, a likelihood ratio statistic. And um, and you know the measured values um, would then be denoted by a lowercase um, uh, lambda, um, and would give rise to uh, a so-called likelihood ratio test, which would be any test of the form um, with a critical region. defined um, by an inequality of the sort uh, lambda less than or equal to k. So again, then we're saying that critical region where we reject the null hypothesis means that the uh, likeliness of getting your answer under the null hypothesis is relatively small, which means that the top is relatively smaller than the bottom, and that is, um, is, is what we're saying in this, in this context. All right, so this is a this is a little bit thick, I realize. Um, so let's proceed uh, by taking a look at an example.